Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Visio. What I would like to look at in this module is how to create a pivot diagram in Visio. So this on the screen is a pivot diagram where you've got some source data which is coming from an Excel spreadsheet with some summary information in that spreadsheet, so some fields that you can add up, spend. And then the pivot diagram is showing information by quarter, by department and by personnel. Now I can do all of this in one, what's called node, but I've done it in three separate ones and I'll show you how that works. Now on this particular one, I've got a filter, which this is the HR department and there's lots of locations, but I've just filtered it to Belper. And on this one, Gary Reed, I've broke it down so I can see Gary Reed's quarterly sales. So I want to recreate something like this on a new file. So to do that, you go file new, now, the pivot diagram is sitting there because I've been using it, but if you haven't used it, it sits inside the business category and then it's near the bottom on the left there, pivot diagram. Click create and then it will start a wizard and you select the type of data that you're trying to bring across. So I'm bringing an Excel spreadsheet, so I'll click next. Now, if you haven't actually done this already, it will not be in this list, but mine is you will have to browse for it. Next. Now I've got a spreadsheet set up that's just got one sheet called raw data, but on that sheet, I've named the actual data range data, so I can just select data. Then next. At this stage, you've got the option to deselect any field that you don't want to bring into your diagram. So at the moment, I'm going to leave all those as they are, but you could tick some of these off if they're not relevant. So I'll leave that as that. Okay, and then next. And then that finishes the wizard. So you can click finish and then it will drop a pivot node, what's called a pivot node, onto your diagram. So there you go, pivot node. And above that, there's a title, which is quite hard to see. If I change the font to black, you should see that, which just says data. Now, this one has got it summarized by dates because that's what's ticked there. But I'm going to take that off and tick spend and take the tick off that one. So now it's saying the total spend. Change the title to quarterly, quarter spend, because that's what I want to do first off, and click back onto this. When you do a pivot diagram, you get a tab at the top that says pivot diagram, where you've got some information there. Now normally you would have the, this legend coming up, and if I just zoom in a little bit, it just tells you basically where the file, the data source is coming from and the last time it was updated. Uh, I don't want that on there, so I'm just going to take that off. The title is there, title on off, and then you can just move this around as you, as you wish. Now, what you have on the left hand side are categories and you can add these categories to your, your top node. And I want to add first off quarters. So I'll click on quarters and it's going to add the quarter of the totals in for me for this company. And while it drops them in, the alignment is up to you. You can change the alignment or direction from these two buttons. You can move things left and right. So if I wanted the first quarter to be, or the second quarter to be first, I could move it left. I don't, so I'm going to leave it as it is. And then you can add categories additional categories underneath these ones. So for example, if I want to look at department underneath um, this one, I'll click on department and then it should drop the information in there. There's quite a few different departments. So sometimes it can take quite a bit of time while it's trying to get the data. You have to just have to be patient and wait for it to come in. So there's the, the data. Now it's all coming underneath across the bottom like that. I don't really want it like that. So this is where you need to play around with alignment. So if I try top, then it's, that's good. I like that. It's going down as opposed to across, but it's totally up to you how, you how you set that up. So that's basically how that works. And if I want to do a filter on this one, so I've still got it selected. So I can click on filter and then um, it's wanting me to click on department. So if I click on filter, I want it to filter just the HR department. So if I click equals and then HR, okay. 
it should get rid of all the other ones and just show me the HR department and then you can then add additional fields or categories should I say into this one so if I click into the HR department and what can I put in there let's try colleague I don't know who's going to come up there there may be one or more people working in the HR department it doesn't matter but it's just going to put the, the information in for you and then you can collapse it out of the way if you don't want that information and add something else in there or remove the filter so there's only Chris Teal that's in there so it's it's um, one person per department I think in this data source that I've got up but quite often that wouldn't be the case it would be a lot more than that now if you suddenly don't want any of this data you can collapse it out of the way so let's say I don't want this anymore I can just click on Oh, I don't want Chris Steele, I'll click on collapse, we'll get rid of him, and if I don't want the HR showing, I can click collapse again, it gets rid of the HR. And if I don't want them, I can click collapse again, and it will get rid of those. So, I'm back to square one. So let's try and do it a different way. Let's go for location. There's quite a few locations. So that's going to be quite a long list and you can see how it drops it in there so location so i've got anik there even though it looks like it's alnwick it's it's pronounced anik now let's see i want the quarters in there. again it comes up with that because i'm not clicking on the title quarters okay it's aligned to me quarters it's very really, um finicky in terms of where you clicked on the box so it should drop the quarters in so there's only uh, one quarter spend in that particular town so that's down to how this data, uh, source data is so there's no spend in the third second third fourth quarters in that particular place if I do that for Ashington drop it down see how it works Now there may, may be more than one quarter in Ashington. No, there's not. So it's all dependent on how the source data is. Uh, I'm trying to think where there might be some more than one. Maybe not. I think these have all. Try um, Derby quarter. thinking about it it's taking a little bit of time so while it's doing that let's have a quick look at something else there's only one in that one as well okay so let's knock these off um, let's collapse that down right, let's collapse it all down so what you can do is you can have more than one node so over on this side you've got shapes here if I just pick it up drop it in at the bottom there so it gives you some a chance for another node so I could maybe put a node there it'll start the wizard again I'll go and get the same data but you could get different data if you've got different sources um, we'll just follow this through and then finish so that will do exactly the same it's still an automatic alignment so if I change this to um, spend as well I don't want the date in there and just move this one across data two so the first one says quarters so I'll call this departments and find department Okay, so what has it done there? I sent that all the way down there, so I need to move this one. Set that 
and do this one by quarters. Change the alignment and zoom it down a bit. Change that font color. So department, quarterly spend. Um, let's just move this up to the top. Now what's happening, I think, is every time I do this, the alignment's resetting itself, which is slightly irritating. And let's move department up there as well. So I'm going to do another one. This is slightly different to the first diagram I showed you, but it doesn't matter. You get the idea, I think. Let's put it like that. And then if I drag another node on, I can have a look at personnel. Same thing, same process. Data source, next. Leaving it on that, next. Finish. So changing that to spend, taking the tick off. I'll do the alignment first this time. So alignment from the top. In fact, I don't actually want the alignment from the top on this one. Let's um, leave it on the left because I want to add personnel or colleague. So this is going to drop the colleagues in, hopefully, and not totally trash everything. Now, don't forget, every time the source data changes, so will this data. If you've got it set up on an automatic refresh, so there you can see each person and what they've spent. And if I click on this, and maybe just go a bit mad here, add a quarter. I should have done the alignment first, but it doesn't matter. You'll see how it works. Click back on there, change the alignment to top, so there it comes down, and then I'll leave that like well. Let's put location on this, change the alignment. Well, the alignment will be left, but if I put location, see what happens. So the ability to collapse things out of the way, filter things, add extra nodes, manipulate the node, makes it a very useful tool and very simple to use once you get used to what it's doing and how it's changing things around. And when it does stuff like that, slightly irritating because I wanted that to go left. There you go. So if I come back out on this diagram a little bit so you can see everything. That's, um, so I've got three different nodes, all, all looking at the same data source and taking up quite a bit of space actually. So if I just move this one onto that page, so it's over there. That one's not going to fit on one page anyhow, I don't think. If I just move it up to the top left hand corner anyhow. And then this one, all of this, I just maneuver that the best I can to fit it's not going to fit on two pages but well, that's better it's tidied it up a little bit and then you've got if you want on the design options you can select any of these that will color the thing in for you make it pretty or not pretty okay and then if I zoom back in on that You can see how that works. So this last one needs to just be named. I'll just call it staff or something. Which is a bit of an old-fashioned word nowadays. Just looking to see if there's a better colour scheme there. Modern. No difference really. But basically that's how you create a pivot diagram and then how you can manipulate the pivot diagram to show you the data in a way you want and don't forget if you want to get rid of anything you can just collapse it out of the way like that and you can go back to your default node so there's nothing there and then you can just add it in again and every time the source data changes 
you either refresh manually or you've already set it up in options as I said before so hopefully that's been of use to you and you can get your head around that and don't get frustrated when it's not doing it immediately because there is a bit of a time delay sometimes when you do add categories especially if you've got a large data set so it's all down to the size of the data I suppose is how quick this will update but that's the end of this session hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next one thank you for your time